Hambini fans and welcome to another episode of Hambini Reams. In today's episode we have something that you're probably not expecting, maybe. Well, I don't know really. Right, some of you kind of like tune in to learn something. Some of you, or most of you, tune in for the sarcastic piss taking. Today we've got a bit of both. Now, to be honest, I only do this channel for a bit of a laugh. Um, I don't really get off on the hits, the subscribers or the ad revenue, which I might add is shit. One thing I do like is the sadistic comments that people put below the videos, because I find that quite funny and it is a topic of conversation, usually in the dinner queue. In today's episode, I have made a mistake. And for that, I must apologize unreservedly. Earlier on in the year, we had a handsome young YouTuber with the entire contents of a Saudi oil well dispensed in his hair who decided to ridicule me. And I must confess, I am really sorry. I didn't ream him hard enough, but today I'm going to change that. Now, I was going to let this go, um, but I rocked up at a, a Hanseatic Engineering League meeting and this was actually a topic of conversation so a couple of guys from the bearing manufacturers um, they actually spoke to me quite clearly about some of the concepts that young Reginald presented and they suggested that I um, was to put a video out to to sort of like address those little things because some of this is like tongue-in-cheek but some of the things he does, you could end up actually hurting yourself doing them. It's a remote possibility, but it exists. Now, this is Reginald Scott's homepage. Now, if you look at it, he has, at the time I'm doing this, 6,000 subscribers. And he has a few videos in there where he's got my name in there. And they do quite well. So, the Hambini video, if I click it on popular, here we've got... Hambini was wrong, lowly bike mechanic versus engineer on bearing removal. So the sort of narrative around that is he presents himself as a lowly bike mechanic and then schools me um, on how to remove a bearing. And he's got that one and then another one and so on and so forth. Now in here, he's also got some videos which, if you've watched them, I think they're pretty much on the edge. Um, there's a 30 minute video on how to wrap your handlebars incorrectly. They're his words, not mine. And he's also got this video up here, which is CO2 isn't pollution. Now, I would urge you to go and... Well, actually, I wouldn't urge you to go and watch that. It's fucking diabolical. Right, anyway, we move on. So, we've got this. Now, you can see this video is called Hambini Bottom Brackets and Why I Would Never Buy One. To be clear, and I want to stress this, he is quite entitled to put whatever he wants out. It's his own opinion and the stuff that I present, I'm not telling you to uh, obey it. I'm not asking you to obey it. You can just do what you want with it, but I'm just going to present the information and then you can do what you want. So here we go. This is him with a vernier. I don't know if that's from Aldi or Amazon. <laughs> Who knows? But you know what we're like with verniers on this show. So he's got a titanium bottom bracket and he's measuring it. Mm, about 45, 91, 92. I'm getting 45, 92. So you can see that it's pretty consistent. Consistently shit, right? <laughs> we'll come on to this bit in a minute. No, it's basically exactly, it's about 45, 90 all the way around. And what's nice about this is because it's so perfectly aligned, what I can't believe there is, he has gone to say that the bottom bracket is perfectly aligned without actually doing an alignment check. So he's, it's round, he's measured it as round, but it's fucking undersized, man. That is seriously undersized. The limit value is 45.95 to 46, and he is at 45.91 on titanium, and titanium is absolutely unforgiving. On titanium, you want to be up like, 45.99 something like that 45.98 at a push you really need to do that the, this he loves his titanium bike he goes on about it being the best thing since sliced bread but have a look at that you can see the the shell near the top 
um, is quite thin. Where, where the cursor is, hopefully you can see that. If not, zoom in. And then at the bottom, it's quite thick and it's quite irregular. So it's, it's well, it's to tame. Now we come on to the bottom brackets that he's got as alternatives. And the bottom brackets, which is the 45, 97, 96. So very close, almost perfectly on uh, 46. So he's measured a bottom bracket there and it is undersized. So the whole size has got to be 46 millimeters and his bottom bracket is measuring 45.97. What is scandalous is he owns a bike shop. So he should know that A, his frame is undersized and B, his bottom bracket is less than it should be. And my bottom bracket is almost perfectly on 46. As he says his bottom bracket on his bike is almost perfectly on 40, 46. I mean, fucking hell, it's not. It's not even fucking close. 45.91, 45.92. That's like mega, mega out. I mean, what the fuck is going on here? Absolute fucking diabolical. Well, so these are a really good fit. These are a really good fit. Fuck me. I almost fell off my chair. 94, 45, 95. So again, pretty. Right, so now he's going to talk about the BBB bottom bracket. Again, with aluminium cups and an aluminium sleeve, it's got, again, very nice quality bearings in it at the top. <laughs> this, is, this is the bit that... It's just, it's just a fucking lie, man, right? Self-aligning chrome alloy steel bearings, okay? That, there is no way the bearings in there are self-aligning steel chrome bearings right so what's happened here is reginald has read directly from the spec sheet for bbb and bbb said that it, it might be pf30 or it might be bb86 kind of like doesn't matter it's probably this one or this one so it says self-aligning bearings increase durability i can tell you for a fact that this bottom bracket does not have self-aligning bearings because it doesn't have two rows of balls and it's not wide enough, just physically not wide enough to get a self-aligning ball bearing in there. All he's done is read directly from the spec sheet and it's almost like a David Arthur moment. So this is what a self-aligning ball bearing looks like. You can see the two rows of balls and it's got a spherical motion. You can clearly see from um, Reginald's video here that that is not self-aligning. You can't have a self-aligning bearing with a seal on it. Look, it's got to be plain because the seal will just, you know, rip out. So it's just basically bullshit. Right, it is that time of the show again. It is time for PowerPoint, which I better just check the pen is working. We might need to do some red penning here. More bullshit than a cattle farm. I'll just keep it right down to the point. By Hambini, aged five. Now, before I go on any further, let me just go back to the business about the bottom bracket. The limit value is 45.95 to 46. It's described here. This is the SRAM technical manual who made PF30 and BB386 is just PF30 that's, that's made a bit wider. Now, earlier on this year, uh, we had something called blind bearing puller gate, which was where um, Reginald's made a video which a lot of people actually follow the instructions on here and I'll be honest some people in certain places think that the activities associated with it aren't exactly safe um, and it revolves around a wind space I've put a picture of a wind space hub up here but it could be any real hub and it's specifically the rare hub now in this picture you, you can actually quite clearly see what we're on about so this is the the free hub and it's got two bearings and this thing in between, which is called a spacer and it's a preload spacer. So normally on devices, you have an, a method of adjusting preload. So if you've got a Shimano crank, you'll see that star shaped plug thing on the non-drive side, um, which you screw in and they say, make it finger tight, that is preload. On some other things like SRAM adjusters, it's like a, a round, um, nut that's a very big diameter with an allen key so you round you turn it to whatever the preload is so you've taken the play out and then lock it off with the allen key that's what that is this 
the key thing is it's not adjustable. So if you were to, let's say, I'm making this up, but let's say that, oh God, that is a good rectangle. If, if that was your preload spacer originally and you made it sort of like that, by damaging it, you've lost that amount of preload. Now that is an exaggeration, but you know, we're gonna come to that anyway. Um, now, the following from that, all, I, all that happened was, I got you know, ridiculed, Reem, you don't have to take bearings out, this, that, and the other, da, 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 da. Well, SKF and NTM will come to in a minute, um, don't advise you to use this kind of device to take a bearing out that um, is, is flush up against something. Um, so they, they've given me this, well, you can, you can download it yourself, but it's, it's on the website. You can see this, it's called a TMIC. TMIC is one of the most popular blind bearing extractors around. Loads of people have them, probably the guy that fixes your washing machine or even um, someone you know, in, in a car garage will have one of these. It probably will be a different size. It's not gonna be sort of seven to 28 millimeters, probably a lot bigger than that, but you get the idea. Um, you can clearly see the puller claws, they protrude past the edge of the bearing. And that is the bit that um, can cause damage because as you screw the uh, collet up and it expands, it's gonna preferentially go towards the softer material. Now, and that is you know, what I said. Uh, NTN went a bit further than that. So this is the NTN, I guess the equivalent. Um, so it's called the BP, bearing puller set or ball puller set. And these are the instructions from it. And they make it very, very clear here, they, it's, you know, they, they've zoomed in and said, look, the claws come out and then we'll hit anything that's sitting behind it. Um, unfortunately, in, uh, in like a bearing of this description or hub in, of this description, you do have the spacer that sits there. Okay, now Reginald says it looks like that. The only problem with that is SKF and NTN tell you how much clearance you need behind it. So we've got a clearance of zero and at most the chamfer can only be like a quarter of a millimeter. So they specify here how much space you need behind the bearing. And you can quite clearly see for um, like a 12 mil bearing, you'd be looking at, oof, <laughs> not very much three millimeters, something like that. Three millimeters is actually quite small. So recently, Reginald produced a video called Disappointing Dangerous Ceramic Bearings, um, where he took a um, wind space wheel apart and said it was dangerous and damaged and all sorts of, all sorts of things. Now in there, he, he took the wheel apart, I'm gonna show you in a second, and he, he proudly said, I took this uh, spacer out with my blind bearing puller and there is no damage whatsoever to it. Now, I think that statement is slightly misleading um, because of about what you're about to see. If you take a look where I've highlighted, you can see that gap diminishes as he turns, so it's in sync with his rotation, effectively like a TIR. This is the other side, so you can see it looks a lot more uniform on that side. And as he spins it, there is no huge gaping gap going around. So he turns the spacer sort of 45 to 50 degrees every time. Um, if you look at the second rotation, you can quite clearly see the gap diminish as he turns it. Um, and this is a crude way of doing what's known as a TIR, total indicated run out. Um, it's basically, I think, he's damaged the spacer but he doesn't know it. Now, putting up to a straight edge, which is what he usually does, and claiming it's undamaged is just like, <laughs> it's just a joke. Um, the other thing is when he turns it over and then you do the other side, there is no gaping gap. Um, so on the first side, as he turns it, the gap diminishes as he turns it, and it's very apparent on the second rotation. You might say, well, it's because the, the uh, spacer has got a load of clearance in it, well, that might be the case, but as he turns it, the gap's diminishing as well. So, you know, I could spend hours explaining this, but you know, there we go. Now, by the end of the video, he took the video, uh, sorry, he took the wheels apart three times and claimed it was mainly due to axle wear that was causing you know, the rocking on his 
wheels. Could be, but I mean, it's pretty obvious that the, uh, the space is <laughs> not round anymore. Uh, but I fully expect him to go off and cone it and then um, produce another video showing it to be perfectly round. Then next we've got we've got him having a go at my headset video. <laughs> now for this video you can see my bike is well used and well thrashed. Now I'll stick my hand up and say I don't care take care of the bike whatsoever. So all the pedantic people who say you shouldn't use a screwdriver and you shouldn't do prying and all that kind of stuff that those comments are totally valid if you care about the paint. If you don't care about the paint and all you really care about is the mechanics of it then you know I think it's fair game. What is quite disturbing is Reginald's analysis of it. Now, Reginald is very critical in commenting on how loose everything is. Now, I think it's fairly obvious that I had to do that in order to film it. So the angle of the bike and, you know, I think he's you know, being pedantic for the sake of it. Now, to cut a long story short, mechanics are forever having a go at me because I avoid using grease. So I put the joints in dry um, and that's because it attracts dirt it acts like a grinding paste and there is documented evidence of it attacking um, epoxy over time and epoxy is used in carbon fiber and is used to glue carbon fiber together so over time it goes soft what is quite frightening is his perception of mechanical principles now you can see this top cap here he thinks it's coming out as one piece because it's full of corrosion now i don't expect any mechanic to know that it's threaded this is interesting that bolt and that top cap there i'm guessing the top cap's made of aluminium is totally bonded together you can see that they're moving in unison that shouldn't be the case that screw or bolt should be totally independent of that head when he undoes this that bolt should just come out on its own and it and as you can see like i mentioned before the top cap is still well and truly welded to that screw it's that bolt should just come out on its own and it should leave the top cap behind for you to remove separately so loads of corrosion in there loads of corrosion that needs washing out cleaning re-greasing put a bit of grease in there prevent that from happening in the future this is a picture later on so you can see this is it's got a, a collar on it so it's, it's threaded and then finally i wanted to highlight this point because i think this is not very well known now if you if I to play this, you can hear that creaking round, and that is because it is at a high diameter. So you've got an M5 screw and um, a large top cap, like 30 millimeters, something like that. So as it goes round, the force is on the periphery, and when you are like squeezing carbon down, it makes that creaking noise. If you've fitted a bottom bracket, or even if you've watched it, watched some of my bottom bracket videos you can hear that when the bottom bracket goes in it goes ping 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 like that and that is what is happening so the strain is building up and then releasing itself and that's more to do with that design of top cap which is fairly unusual um, but he, he comments that you know I've put too much preload on it I haven't now what, I, what I've shown you is frankly it's borderline shocking really I mean trying to confuse a threaded joint with a corrosion of stainless steel and aluminium i've never heard anything like it before in my life never seen anything like it especially for a pro bike mechanic uh, but you know there you go we all have a laugh every now and again um if you did enjoy this video remember to smash that like button if you didn't go screw yourself and as always keep banging your hairdresser